All right, what's up guys? Nuance Bro checking in from Los Angeles, California. We're at the People's Rally Against Gun Violence. Let's go talk to people, see what's going on. So why are we out here today? We're out here today to stand up for our children who are being killed by the fact that we don't have a policy that stops guns from getting into the hands of everybody. We don't need machine guns to be sold to 16-year-olds. Where, where are we selling machine guns to 16-year-olds? All over the U.S. No. Not in California, I know. Well, no, machine guns are pretty highly regulated. They first got regulated about 19... It's an assault rifle. Well, no, no, there's, I mean, you have, like, they're cosmetically, they look like one, but they're actually, like, semi-automatic variants. Who do you represent? Fashion I may thing. have uh, chosen the wrong term when I said machine gun. Let's sure, just sure. say assault rifles do not belong in the hands of anybody but the army. Why do we need to assault fellows? What about the police? I'm not going to comment on police. I have no idea what they need. But I can say that I don't believe that anyone should walk into a store and buy an assault rifle. That's wrong. And what do you define as an assault rifle? Don't ask me to be specific. What is the one that killed the people in uh, Las Vegas? That one. The one that killed the people in Parkland? That one. The one that killed the kids in um, Sandy Hook? What about Virginia Tech? I don't know. Remember which one that killed? One, it killed. It killed like 32 people, and he used two handguns. But they were both semi-automatic. I mean, but one's a pistol, one's a rifle. Semi-automatic things that fire quickly should not be allowed into the hands. If you want to do target practice and you want to shoot a deer and you want to shoot a target, you don't need it to reload a hundred times really quickly. So, like the standard handgun, you're uh, for banning that. And yes, I'm against all guns, actually. All guns. So yes, I mean, in the hands of civilians. So do you think like states that have less strict gun laws have like higher, you know, murder rates and things like that? Absolutely. So the two safest states in the union are Vermont and New Hampshire and they have some of the least restrictive gun laws in the union. Yet they I have don't the know lowest. That that's the case. Oh, that's it is. not I mean, what I read this morning. So I, sure. I challenge. Which which state do you think has the lowest uh, murder rate? I don't know that, and I don't know the stats. And so if you want to quiz me on stats, I can't answer. And I well, can't. What did you read this morning? Like, what was the stat you read this morning? The stat I read this morning is that some of the states that have enacted gun control laws have reduced their crime. Well, they, they've reduced across the country, uh, across the board, because, you know, we obviously had way higher murder rates in the 80s and 90s. So even regardless of, you know, whether someone had less restrictive or more restrictive, it's just dropped across the country. I, I can't comment on that. I'm seeing more mur ma mass murders. I'm seeing more school shootings. So... Why do you think that is? Because gun I think that is because we have more AK rifles out amongst the population that shouldn't be easy to get. There are kids who can go at age 16 and buy an AK whatever. Why should they well, be doing that? Not 16. That? I think yes. 18 is the, yes. the, the, yes. the age. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? Those, those gun shop owners are apparently not asking. They're they, apparently not asking. They, they definitely go, have to ask. Go all over YouTube. There's demonstrations of kids who've gone into gun shops and they ask to buy a gun and there's no questions asked. No ID, no nothing. They just sell them the gun. I, I don't think the, that's the case. Well, I do. So maybe, let's maybe, have a little argument over your YouTube versus my YouTube. I don't believe when someone says... I mean, you might be talking about the gun show loophole, if no, I'm not mistaken. No, I'm talking about 16-year-olds who walk into gun shops. Hmm. And are able to purchase guns because the gun owners, the gun shop owners, so do they're not breaking the law, right? Yes, they are. Yes, yeah. they are. I mean, how can we? I mean, we've already passed a law to prevent that. So how do we? It. I, I we definitely agree. It. We shouldn't force the laws that are on the books, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what we could do additionally to that, though. We can remove AK-47s. We can take them all back in. We had those back in the, you know, the AK came into production in 1947. The uh, the the MC, you know, the AR-15 came into production in like 1963, I believe. So they've been around for a while, but these mass shootings have been more recent. Why do you think, even though those rifles have been even in the hands of civilians at that time? Why do you think it only came about maybe in like the late 90s, early 2000s, like when these really because started the assault ramping up? rifle ban went out of effect in like I don't know what year it was but in it's 2004 it do you recall when it went out of effect 2004 2004 they let it die and so suddenly people rushed it started in 1994 so they were they obviously didn't really happen much before that in fact they did happen during that time the Columbine massacre happened with you know during the assault weapon ban 
I think in 1999, I believe. So right in the middle of the band, but they still used those types of weapons during the... Uh, it, it's commonly understood that the assault weapons ban didn't really do anything because it kind of just banned cosmetic features. It didn't really... Uh, it didn't really regulate anything. It didn't really do. It was. It was kind of just like. I don't political. think that that's the case. I think it made it hard to get a an assault rifle. No, because people could still buy those guns during that time because it only banned things like you know pistol grips and forward grips and if it had a bayonet lug. So basically, cosmetic features that they could still get rid of those in the gun industry and sell those rifles freely. And you're saying that's how the Columbine guy got that gun? I believe. So what what that ban also did is any of those guns that still existed in circulation at the time were still able to be sold. So you know, that, that's what they did. Here's the deal. I'm here because of the NRA. I'm not here to argue the details of the history of banning features of guns. Well, isn't it important if we're talking about legislation that's is, been passed but in the past? I'm not the expert that you should be interviewing. You can make me look like an idiot because I don't know. Well, I'm not trying history. to. Well. But I don't want to comment on it because I don't know enough about it. By the way, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell for future videos. So why are we out here today? I'm out here because I'm tired of our children dying in our country. We need to do something about our gun laws. And what should we do? Um, I think there needs to be legislation to ban um, assault rifles. Um, the politicians are taking money from NRA, we all know that, and that needs to stop because that obviously influences what they do with our guns. Is it only banning assault rifles? Anything else you'd like to do in addition to that? I think that we already have a lot of um, laws in place, but obviously anybody seems to be able to get that. Um, when President Trump repealed uh, the weapons going to mentally ill, um, it wasn't mentally ill, it was people who uh, needed help collecting like their uh, their social welfare benefits, like the elderly and things like right. that, but they weren't necessarily unfit to... Uh, it a gun? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Okay, then I think there needs to be more... Even the ACLU kind of supported Trump's repeal That's of that. That's true. But then, you know, there needs to be more of a focus on people that are getting these guns that really aren't stable to have them. So, you know, something's happening. I think there needs to be more um, services in schools because these children are falling through the cracks and a lot of these mass murders have been done by young, young adults. So I think that um, we need to have more services in the school to try to detect this. So A lot of these happened a lot more uh, recently, like probably in the last two decades or so. We've mm -hmm. seen sort of like this uptick that we've never really seen before. Right. What, even though household gun ownership rates have gone down in the country, why do you think these are happening more often? That I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. Um, I know that uh, I think sometimes I feel like it's a copycat thing, like, uh, you know, they got away with it, they did it, and so they, they kind of reward it in the media or something? Yeah, yeah. I don't really know what the answer is to that, but yeah. So, I mean, back to the, uh, the actual like legislation, what we're going to do about it. You talked about banning assault rifles and things like that. Uh, what about handguns? Do you support banning handguns? You know, I just think I don't because I, I think that if people can use their guns responsibly, that's fine. But I think there does need to be stricter, like more, maybe a 21 day wait to get those. I know I just watched something in Iowa. It took the guy 20 minutes to get a gun, you know, and that's ridiculous. That's just, that's not enough time to really do a thorough background check. Well, 85, I think about 85% of the murders or something like that, uh, they're committed by with handguns, not these rifles. Like the rifle. I haven't heard that statistic. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's it's almost majority handguns because it's you know typically gang violence and they want to carry a concealed so, handgun that's convenient and a rifle would be kind of hard to carry around to go kill people. Sure, the, sure. Those specific rifles, the ones that are using these shootings, are used in about probably one percent of all murders in this country. Assault rifles. Yes. Right, but what what the problem is is look how many people die when they're used. So in Las Vegas. In Sandy Hook, those are all assault rifles. Well, so. Do you think it's part of like a thing where the media kind of hypes it up and almost kind of tells no. they t they tell these shooters like this is the mo deadliest gun, like this is what you should get basically if no, you want to kill I lots don't. of people. I don't. Cause because the Virginia Tech murder, they, they killed 32 people and it was just with handguns. Well, I thought that was rifles actually. No, no, Virginia okay. Tech was, was two okay. handguns. Okay. The, the Asian guy. Right. Um, you know, uh, that was how long ago was that? Uh, 2007, I think. Okay, so obviously in 10. 10, 11 years, we've put in more uh, things in, in place. But, you know, we're doing these drills. I'm a preschool teacher, and just last week we literally did a drill for preschoolers. These are two and three year olds. This is ridiculous, you know. I'm, I'm 
you know, why are we having the shelter in place in the first place? So to me, assault weapons, you're right, handguns are deadly too, but assault weapons are the worst. So what do you think is the difference? What do you think is the difference between like the common handgun and these assault weapons? Uh, that that you can fire way more rounds with an assault weapon than you can with a handgun. How so? They're the same technology. They're both semi-automatic. With but you can add the magazine clips to the assault rifle. So do the the handguns have them as well? Like the they do. yeah the Glocks they can ha they can hold even up to a hundred rounds. What do you think? Do you think both of them should be banned? I, I just have to ask the questions. Okay. Okay. I have to play neutral. Yeah. I, right now, I'm here mainly for the assault weapons because those seem to have been done the most damage, and they're getting in the school shootings, in not in, in general society. Shootings. Yes, yes, because I know that there's criminals on the street that use handguns, but these mass shootings of young children, those are all done with assault weapons. So that's that's what I think the focus should be right now. So why are we out here today? <laughs> to um, and. Sorry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> um, to try to, can you talk? <laughs> um, to encourage Congress to stop taking money from NRA. Sure, and well, why? Because we have children to protect. Lives are at stake, and this is not a joke. Sure. So, how are lives at stake because NRA gives money to people? Sure, they buy our politicians, and then they don't pass gun reform. And so, wh why do you feel like gun reform legislation is going to protect children? I mean, we got to take necessary steps. We can't have AR-15s out there just for anyone to use and just take it to a school. Sure. Why? 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 Why AR-15s in specific? Like, what do you want? You want to ban them, and why? Sure. I mean, they're, they're not necessary. I understand hunting or different shooting range hobbies. I guess you feel the right to, but no one has a right to an AR-15. I mean, what do you need that for? Self, some people would say self-defense, uh, protection against a tyrannical government, which is the original intent of the Second Amendment. Sure, but that is an absolute myth. I mean... What, what's an absolute myth? I mean, you can look at Chris Kyle. I mean, he had a gun, trained military professional, and it didn't save his life. And so the idea that having a gun on hand, if someone else has a gun, is going to save your life, is not true. It's an you mean it's, it's never happened? I don't Why think... Why do we outfit police with guns then? Well, sure, yeah, we outfit police with guns, but we train them, and they're they're not a lay person. Well, Chris Kyle was more trained than a police officer. Exactly, and I mean, that just goes to show that it's not a guarantee. Um, just because you have a gun and you have training doesn't mean you're safe. I don't think anyone says it's a guarantee, but it certainly you know changes the odds. He was obviously caught blindsided by someone he was taking out to the range who he trusted, and he was obviously mentally ill, and he took the gun and used it against him. So sure, and I'm, but I mean, he even texted his friend, "Hey, I think something's up with this guy. I think something's wrong with this guy." And so he had, you know, an idea that this wasn't safe, and yet he couldn't protect himself, and that's really unfortunate, and that's why we need to do greater reform for people with mental illness no longer being able to gain access to guns. Sure, but you obviously don't deny that there's plenty of people out there who actually do defend themselves with firearms, right? There's thousands and millions of cases, actually. Sure, sure. sure. But I mean, we need to do some reform. I'm not saying it's, you know, without a doubt, evil all the time. But I mean, we need to do some serious reform. Sure, like what specifically? Maybe um, close the, um, the loophole for the gun shows do better background checks. I mean, there's a lot that we can do, I feel. I mean, I don't. I personally don't feel anyone needs an AR-15, you know? I mean, we don't need a lot of things, right? But it's sometimes, like, it's a, it's a bill of rights, not a bill of needs, correct? Sure, but I mean, that is so outdated. I mean, we made that years ago when the, there weren't such things as AR-15s. I mean, I mean we did the same thing with the First Amendment. There's no internet back then. There was no, you know, sort of like modern day magazines, prints, there was no pornography, there was plenty of things that didn't exist. Sure, but you're comparing um, media to weapons, and I don't think that those are quite things that you can, you know, equate. Well, you compare it to the Fourth Amendment, which definitely has, you know, ramifications. If we can't search a criminal, uh, it could result in the loss of life, right? So, you know, new technologies come that allow us to look through walls and stuff, and the Supreme Court has said, no, you can't do that because it violates, you know, the original intent of the Fourth Amendment. Sure, and I mean original, I mean, the point of an amendment is that, you know, we're, we're changing things, and I think amendments should be updated. Sure, so do you believe in repealing the Second Amendment? I mean... No, I mean, that's, it's hard. I, I wouldn't say outright. Why, why wouldn't you? I feel like that is, would be a huge pushback. I think that's a large step. I think what we're looking for here is some common sense 
changes and not necessarily a, you know, a drastic pullback of all weapons everywhere. I think a lot of people would say they don't think it's common sense. So it's kind of one side saying it's common sense, one side saying it's not common sense. So, I mean, we sure, can't I mean, really come to an agreement there. I mean, what's not common sense about doing better background checks? What's not common sense about, you know, closing the gun show loophole? I mean, I don't understand. Well, what do you think of the gun show loophole is, for example? Like, what is that? Well, I mean, people can go to a gun show, go to a private seller, and just buy a bunch of guns. Well, and they could buy you know, it from a private seller outside of a gun show, too. Sure, but I mean, you can travel to a different state, go buy a bunch of guns at a gun show, buy a bunch of ammunition. Well, and then you're supposed to be from the same state. You're not really supposed to sell it to people out of state. So you're not if supposed they're, to. So, yeah, so they're breaking the law if they're not really checking to see if the person's a resident sure. of that state. Yeah, but people don't always check. I mean, there's people... I mean, they sell so much ammunition, and then, like you saw for um, the the other shooting we had, they saw and he thought he wasn't responsible for how much ammunition was sold. But I mean, there are, I'm, we need better regulation. We need people checking and and not just trying to turn a profit on sales. Sure. So do you think do you actually feel like there's evidence that better regulations will lead to less uh, violence and less murders? Sure. Yeah, I do. Like, like what's your evidence for that? I just feel like. Um, I mean, I don't have, like, you know, a bunch of stuff. Other countries. Offhand. Other countries have gun regulations, like Japan almost has... Japan never really owned guns in the beginning. It's, it wasn't part of their culture for the most part. Well, but during wartime, weapons were a lot more prevalent throughout Japan, and after wartime, they realized that there was no real, there was no reason to have, for citizens to have weapons, and they still citizens still do have the right to possess weapons, but they have to go through extensive, extensive background checks. And it's not, it's not really a right if it's like super restrained. It's like it, it doesn't really work that way. It is still a right. It's still a right, but if if you have to take as much precaution as you need to buy a gun as you do to buy a car, that's common sense gun control. It shouldn't be easier to buy a gun than a car. It shouldn't be easier to buy Sudafed than a car. It shouldn't be all these th or than a gun. And so all of these things are just common sense, just basic background checks and you know a bill of sale and um, uh, these types of things are really easy to put in place. But so let's take a country like the UK for example, right? Like they have what like 0 0.92 murders per hundred thousand compared to the United States, we have like what like 4.38 I believe so it's like our rates like four or five times higher than theirs but if you actually look before they passed gun control they actually had lower rates of homicide before the laws were passed than afterwards so what are your thoughts on that I think it's really difficult to compare because it's such a different culture but I we're not comparing the US to the UK I'm comparing the UK to itself uh -oh. you just I mean that's that's a fair point. I mean, you could also compare Australia to itself as well, though. I mean, they had a significant amount of um, gun violence before, and then now they don't. Well, and so you it can. It wasn't. I mean, th their rates were already decreasing before the gun control laws were passed by, I think, by about three percent per year. And then actually, after they passed the gun laws, they started leveling off because it was kind of reaching near true zero. So it would obviously naturally level off, but it was going down before that. So there was obviously other factors that were at hand. Sure, but I mean, you still had mass shootings, and now you don't. I mean, it was kind of a statistical anomaly to begin with. I have also seen some suggestions that there have been like public acts of violence and shootings in that country after the ban, but they just weren't as well publicized. Sure. Uh, but it's also a country of like 24 million people, so they're already statistically almost impossible compared to us as a country of 330 million people. Sure. I mean, when you look at statistics, it's a numbers game, and you can have confounding variables. I mean, you can look at the UK and you can say, well, maybe there's something else going on there. So why are we out here today? Out here to protest gun violence and inaction by Congress in the face of uh, money from the NRA. Sure, and what do we want to achieve out of this? Uh, gun control, assault rifle ban, uh, 10 round magazines, uh, no bump stocks. That got talked about a lot after the Vegas shooting. Everybody pretty much across the aisle agreed that we needed to get rid of bump stocks, and nothing's happened. Everybody got excited about it, and then nothing happened to change it. So. We got to hear, we're here, we have to hold them accountable. Sure. So, uh, assault assault rifles, like, is it just all semi-automatics in general, or just those ones specifically, and why? Um, assault rifles, I mean, it's a, it's a broad term. It means a lot of things to a lot of people, but the um, there are certain characteristics. The vertical handle, things that are designed 
equipped to make it suitable for, for battle to kill other people. You don't need... Well, they could remove that, obviously, and it would still have the same function, right? Yes. Um, That's kind of what made the original assault weapons ban kind of ineffective, and it led to the, you know, the Columbine massacre during that time. Uh, well, the Columbine massacre, they got the guns illegally anyway, um, whereas for a lot of the recent ones, they've gotten them legally, at least it seems so, well, or so, there are things someone, that they can get Someone legally. originally bought it legally because they, they asked a friend to go buy it kind of legally, and then he transferred it to them, which was the illegal part. Fair enough. Um, the point is... There are guns that are equipped to do a lot more than the basic security needs, basic hunting or ground protection needs. Um, I know I, I read, read articles by people that sort of on the gun side of things that they use their AR-15 to shoot groundhogs at their, at their farm. Uh, and it's great for that. I'm sure it's very, you know, easy and accurate and everything but it's more than you need. It's, it's overpowered, it's driving a race car on a street. It, you just, a simple 22, you know. For a groundhog, maybe, maybe not for actual hogs. Like wild, like boars on your farm and stuff that you need to hunt with a helicopter because there's so many of them. That's like a fringe thing. We could obviously probably license that out in special specific circumstances. That's what I'm saying. You own a farm, but I mean, you were talking about like, the characteristics. I mean, would you only support a band like that just limited, like, oh, if it has these characteristics? No, I think or? I think uh, you made a great point in terms of registration. That's another thing um, that slipped my mind when you asked about things we want. Definitely a registration. Um, the same, you know, minimum requirements it takes to get a driver's license, to drive a car, you should have to own and operate a gun. Sure, but I mean, but the assault rifles specifically, like what kind of legislation should we, you know, formulate to control those? Um, I personally am one who tends to put my faith in the experts. Uh, they're specialists on this, these matters and they know a lot more than I in terms of what laws there already are and what things will actually make a difference. We have data from I'm, excuse me, we don't have data from the past 30 years because research... What do you mean? Data what on, kind of data? Data on shootings, data on... We have data on shootings. We have, we have... FBI reports and stuff. We have some minimum data. The CDC has not been collecting any data to study it as a health risk, a public they, they health risk. They can't do, like, studies that advocate a certain sort of uh, outcome, for example. They can't frame it in any sort of way. They are not allowed to look at it and say guns are a public health risk. And that is not uh, an ideological framing. That is either a fact or it's not a fact. And we, they have not been allowed to study it, examine it, because of the ideological um, and ultimately commercial arguments for gun control. For, uh, excuse me, for guns. So do you support banning handguns, for example? That's a complicated question, and I think they need to be severely limited. I don't think they necessarily need to be banned outright, but again, I think uh, training requirements and registration requirements and safety requirements at home are all things that need to be, you know, amped up and looked at and, and found a good, safe measure of. So they're obviously more of a problem, though, than these assault rifles because they're responsible for, I think, something like 85% of the murders in this country, whereas these assault rifles specifically, I think it's like one, maybe 2% of the murders in the entire country. So, I mean, wh why would we ignore the, the handguns if they're the majority, vast majority of the problem? I definitely think we need to do that. I also think we need to get the guns off the streets. I think we need to do buybacks. I think... I don't think we need to go take them. I don't Voluntary think or like involuntary? Oh. That's what I'm I mean, saying. We do those already. We need to advertise. We need to make a push. We need to make a, I mean, we need to get people out in the streets talking about it, doing a big, uh, a big, making it a movement to actually encourage people. Because if people keep thinking, mm, guns are cool, guns are, guns are good, guns are safe, guns make me better or bigger, then they're going to hold on to their guns. And if the message can change and if people can actually get, accept the facts that having a gun in the home leads to increased homicides, it leads to increased suicides. Um, well, it's those, those studies actually, are a bit disputed because of the way they were conducted. Uh, you're talking about the Kellerman study specifically? I think it was done up in Washington. 
Well, we can do an interview afterwards oh, sorry if you'd like. That, no, no worries, man. No worries. <laughs> um, there's every study has issues. Every study has has challenges. That's why we need more. That's why we need to do more studies, more information. That's how science works. Is lots of people do the studies, lots of people gather the information, and we find a consensus together. We, they. Um, so, any other? Yeah, I mean, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, thanks. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. So, why are we out here today? Uh, I'm kind of I'm out here, kind of doing the same thing you are, just talking to people about um, you know a different perspective on everything that's going on and trying to see what why people are here and you know see if I could offer them uh, perspectives that they might have not have th thought about before because like what, what, what kinds well there's a lot of emotional stuff going on there's a lot of people demanding things that are just completely unrealistic um, I'm all for listening and and you know some certain you know there's just a lot of I agree with some of what's going on here, but then some of it's just like, oh my, like, what are you talking about? Or like, what, what, which part specifically? Well, people saying that, like, if we banned guns, America would be more safe. Like, American gun owners are the largest standing army in the world, and that's the reason why we don't get invaded. Like, there are things like that that people don't understand. You know, you got signs that say, uh, you know, gun, you know, a million people were, were affected by guns last year, but uh, or negatively, but then... Millions of people were affected positively by them too because they actually, like what I was saying over there, the uh, guns stop the bad things from happening more than they stop bad or guns stop. Depending on the numbers yeah, you look yeah, at. Yeah, like it's all numbers games out here and people have emotional reactions and connect to these things and it's, you know, it's just nice to come out sometimes and tell people because there's no one else here that's even halfway pro gun at all, it seems like. So, what would you like to see happen? Um, I, I don't believe that criminals follow the law, so I don't believe more gun control is going to help. I don't think there is a gun control idea that actually works outside of being able to see the future. There's no way of knowing what someone's going to do in the future. But when we're talking about taking a people's ability to defend their lives and their loved ones away, it's very serious. And you can't just throw around, oh, we need to like restrict white dudes or, you know, like certain things that are, people are saying here, um, white males or the highest mass you know mass shooters so we need to keep guns from white males like I'm seeing stuff like that here and it's just well, like technically most murders are actually committed by blacks so you could argue the same to ban blacks from having them right I don't know I don't see groups like that so you obviously said that you know you don't think gun control is gonna stop like massacres like this no. but what do you say to examples like Australia for example where they they did the gun buyback they had extreme gun That's control gun violence there's still crime there people are still there's killing. no more mass shootings yeah there's mass killing still. There's still people getting killed. It doesn't. It not doesn't mass shootings though. The crime. Yeah, but that that's still. What does what does the implement have to do with it? But, I mean, they, they don't have There's the. There's a guy in China that just stabbed 38 people on a on a stabbing spree. Like the the, like the four years ago. Yeah. yeah. The implement doesn't matter. Like and it, you sh it, it doesn't saying, matter. I mean, we're talking about people being able to defend themselves and their rights being taken away, it has to be some serious stuff, not just, oh, well, because this happened once, we got to take your guns away. I like, you think more people can die like in, in one sort of like act by knives than they can through with an AR-15? More people are dying on the 405 right now. <laughs> more people not in are one dying. act, though. Huh? Not in one act. Like one person one act on, on a single freeway? day deciding to like kill a bunch of people, way more people are going to get killed by an AR-15 than someone with a knife or even with a, a car out here. I don't Some dude ran over like 30 people in Pasadena, or not Pasadena, Sam. How many of them died? Uh, a bunch. But I mean... Not as many as like the, just, the Las Vegas shooting, for example. Though. That, that argument, you can't take my guns because of that. So why are we out here today? Uh, gun control is one of my hot button issues, and I just think there's so many clear things that we can be doing to prevent people from being innocently slaughtered. Sure, like what specifically? Like stop giving money to people in the House and the Senate who are, or stop voting for people who, you know, are getting money from the NRA. Sure, any specific legislation or policy proposals? I mean, I'm not super well versed in all of that, but I just know that like we need to, we need to stop getting these people, we need to get these people out. I mean, you said it was one of your hot button issues, so yeah. why why wouldn't you be well versed? In it? <laughs> I mean, I know I, I'm just I'm still learning more about it, but like, yeah, I'm I'm more I'm more just like um, the same sort of ideological. Uh, ideological. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, what does this sign mean to you? 
Uh, for me, this is like, I mean, we raise boys to be aggressive and, um, you know, we have this whole... Uh, Toxic masculinity, like what, is it, what does that mean to you? Basically, it's just we, we raise boys to be a certain way and be aggressive warriors and fight and it's so easy for them to get guns that, I mean, of course they're going to be killing people. Like, it's a large issue in our society that we need to just... It, it's, it's, a, it's a tall order to fix this, but it is... So it's that. toxic masculinity, is it like a certain type of masculinity, or is it all masculinity, and is there something that's like toxic femininity, like, how does that work? No, I mean, it's, it's really like, it's, uh, not, no, like, there's not toxic femininity, I would say, it's like, it's like raising men to be aggressive fighters and treat women terribly and is it all masculinity that's toxic or is it no no, no. What, what, what kind of mas what kind of masculinity would you say is not toxic uh, the type that is nonviolent and doesn't uh, non nonviolent masculinity I'd say do you, do you think that's a there's like a definition of masculinity that you feel like doesn't include violence for example yeah for sure. We just aren't there at that point with the ra way we raise. I mean, would you would you consider yourself like masculine in the nonviolent sense? I mean, not really. I mean, I am a man. I think there's a lot that we need to unpack with the term masculinity. So why are we out here today? Uh, this is a anti-gun violence rally. I think being put on by Mothers Against uh, Gun Violence, and I don't know what. Moms demand action. I think. Mom's demand action. There you go. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, does somebody oppose gun violence? Like, are there people who are like pro-gun violence or something in this country? Or? Well, they're not uh, pro-gun violence, but they're pro-guns, and they don't equate guns with violence for some reason. Sure. So, what would you like to see done? Uh, I would see. I would like to see the U.S. take a stand uh, similar to what Australia did when uh, Australia had their, you know, mandatory buyback confiscation. <laughs> exactly, mandatory buyback. You know very thorough uh, background checks, uh, you know, elimination of assault-style weapons, and I don't, I don't know exactly all the things they did, but I mean, I imagine it was uh, stuff like that. Sure, so I mean, obviously they didn't really have like so much of a gun culture, it's, it wasn't so ingrained in their society over there. Obviously people here kind of, would you say they're kind of obsessed and crazy? NRA. Yeah, so they're kind of, over here, would you say people are kind of obsessed and crazy about their guns? Yeah, but I think that's fomented by the, the right-wing uh, media. And also our history, right? I mean, we have a Second Amendment, for example. Yeah, but that's not really what the Second Amendment was about. Sure, what is it about? I've read, I've read uh, articles about, you know, it was really more what it states, was that you should have arms uh, to have a ready militia. And we're, we're past that point, you know. There was nothing in the Constitution saying that individuals should have assault-style weapons and well, go not, out and I mean, obviously assault-style weapons didn't <laughs> exist back then, but it did say the right of the people to keep and bear arms should not to be keep, infringed. To keep and bear arms in order to have a ready militia. Well, no, it's, it, it, there's like a prefatory clause, which is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, and then there's the, you know, the operative clause, which says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It uses the people in the same way the Fourth mm. Amendment uses the word people. Yeah. Well, I'm fine with that being overturned. You know, we're sure, past. So you support that. like a repeal of the Second Amendment? Yeah, if you know that, but if you know if people are not ready to do that, then we need all the other things. We need the background checks. We need assault weapons off the. But the street. goal is to reduce overall violence, right? Yeah. So what do you feel is like the evidence for the case for gun control? Like, where? Wh how do we know how that these? How many more people do we need to sh see sh shot? No, I'm every saying, year? like, how do we know it's actually going to reduce those cases? Because there's been studies. You can look at the gun violence rates in other countries that have stricter gun laws, and they would come nowhere near the United States in terms of their level of... That's kind of comparing apples to oranges, right? If we, no, because we have to compare the country to itself. So they obviously have... No, you can compare our rate of gun violence with that of other, uh, you know, European and other countries that have... Why Europe? I can compare it to South Africa any, and it would be... Any country that has stricter gun control, you can... South Africa has way stricter gun control. Mexico yeah. has stricter gun control. El Salvador has stricter gun control. They have murder rates that are many times higher than ours. Mm -hmm. But that's why I'm saying you have to compare the country to the country. So the UK, for example, they have a murder rate significantly less than ours, right? And they have strict gun control. I think their murder rate is about 0 0.92 per 100,000. We're at like four point something. Mm -hmm. And obviously they had gun control that they passed and we know what the rates were before and after that. So what if I told you the rates that uh, of 
you know, murders in that country were actually less before gun control than they were afterwards. Like I said, I am not an expert. I don't have all. I'm not an expert either. I'm not a politician. I just know that I hate guns and I want them off the street. They're killing people. Toddlers are getting them. Students are getting them, you know, mentally disabled people are getting them, and we need to get guns off the street. So nothing would change your mind, no yeah, facts or anything? Nothing would change my mind on that. Fair nothing enough. would change my mind about gun control. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Support me on Patreon. Social media links are in the description box below. And thanks for tuning in for another episode of Nuance. Bro.